Welcome to the last very big chapter of Algebra 1, and this chapter is called Rational Functions and Equations, but we're going to do um, today, we're going to start with the first section, which is two days, called Model Inverse Variation. Inverse variation is the basic principle behind all rational functions. Um, and I'm gonna start by comparing it to direct variation. Um, it's deceptively simple, um, and you'll see what I mean. So y equals ax, I should have, I meant to put just the a in purple. Y equals ax is direct variation. And y equals, I'm still going to have an a, but a divided by x is inverse variation. So both have a constant a, and in this case, I'm going to put something in yellow so it's not really obvious and it's not really a part of what we're doing. If you had plus b, right, it would be a linear equation. But it is not ax plus b, it's just ax, and that's, because, that's what makes it a direct variation. And we'll go into what makes something a direct variation or not. So I'm just going to cross this out by making it hopefully pretty. Right, so that it is a direct variation is just y equals ax, period. There's no plus anything. Um, just so you know what would have been here, it's plus b. But if the plus b is not direct variation. Okay, if you have a plus v, it's not direct variation. Okay, but this is nevertheless linear. Okay, a direct variation is linear. And you guys can tell if x is one, y is one. So if we're to draw this, um, and I were to do if x is one, y is one, if x is 2, y is 2, if x is negative 1, y is negative 1, if x is 0, y is 0. And you can see this just makes a line, y equals ax, okay? It's a line which goes through the origin because there's no plus b, there's no intercept, okay? Um, that is the case in this situation if, if a is greater than 0, right? Um, if a is less than zero, in other words, if a is a negative number, and I'm going to try to fit that in down here. Slightly going off the page. If a is a negative number, you're going to see if a, uh, if I have a, in other words, if a, y equals negative s, if x is 1, y is negative 1. If x is 2, y is negative 2. If x is negative 1 and multiplying it by a negative, it becomes negative. And I'm going to have a direct variation, but going in the opposite direction. And so this is going to be y equals a negative ax, where it's a negative number. Okay? Now, inverse variation is incredibly interesting you would think that this would be a fairly simple looking um, graph, but it is actually very complex looking. Because when you draw, and I'll try to put a little graph and a little table in this corner here, so you can see what I mean. If x is zero, well, you can't have x be zero because you can't divide by x, right? Um, so that's undefined. So x can never be zero. I'm gonna start my graph so you see what I mean. Uh, if x is one, 
right? And I'm going to pretend A is one. If X is, this is if A is one, right? If X is one, well then Y is one. Okay, so far. That's our first real number. X is one, Y is one. If X is two, Y is one half. Well, this is looking somewhat exponential, right? X is two, Y is one half. And X is three, Y is one third. And X is four, etc. Now, what if I go the other direction? What if I have X is a half? Well, if I have X as a half, one divided by half is two. So I'm going up this way. And so here you go. This is half of what this graph looks like. And now we're gonna go look at the other half. What if I have negative numbers? Well, if I have negative one, I get negative one. If I get negative two, I get negative one half. Negative three, negative a third. And what we're going to find is you end up with literally two curves opposite each other, going this direction. This is, again, if A is greater than zero. And you'll find if I were to do this with where A is negative, in other words, A is less than zero, you're going to see the same idea. You're going to see a curve going here. And I know I'm slightly off the page, but and a curve down here. So inverse variation creates this really interesting function, uh, which is called, I'll put it up here, a hyperbola. And we're going to look at what that hyperbola looks like and what kind of situations it models. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm just gonna go back to what is direct variation, what is inverse variation, and what is not. So what is direct variation is y equals ax without this. So I'm gonna rewrite this for you just so that we're really, really clear. Direct variation is y equals ax. Inverse variation is y equals a divided by x, where x is in the denominator. And of course, x, a cannot be equal to zero in both these situations. Um, I'll just put it here so we remember. Now, anything like this, and there'll be many things that are, we'll call them neither, are things like y equals ax plus a number. We'll make, you know, we'll put that number as b. That is neither, it's not direct variation because it does not go through the origin, okay? Um, so the first thing that we have to look, oh, before I go through some problems, which was I was about to do, A is called the constant of variation. And that makes sense. The constant of variation, meaning it tells you how much it varies, right? And if you look back at what we did before, right? I'm putting back what I just did. If A is a big number, this line is going to be like this. If A is a small number, it's going to go like that. What we would call a stretch or a shrink, what A usually does, it stretches and shrinks. Here, if A is big, it's going to take that hyperbola and make the branches go apart further. And here in this direction as well. So it's the constant of variation. And so what we're going to do is look at different situations and the first Thing that you're going to have to figure out is, is something a variation or is it not? Uh, is it in direct variation, inverse variation, or neither? 
So I'm going to give you two poss three possibilities. X, Y equals 4. Y over 2 equals X. And C, Y equals 2X plus 3. Now to determine whether something is direct, inverse, variation, or neither, you have to put it in this form to know. So I have to put it in a y equal form. So to do that, to put this in y equal form, I have to divide both sides by x. And when I do that, I get 4 divided by x. Well, this, you can see, is inverse variation. So my answer for this is going to be inverse variation. Now here, I'm going to look and I'm see again, it's not in y equal form. I have to put it in a y equal something form. And I, since this is divided by 2, the opposite operation is multiplying this side and this side by 2. When I do that, I get y equals 2 times x. And if I look up here, that is the definition of direct variation. Okay. Let's look at c. Well, c equals uh, y, excuse me, <laughs> c is y equals 2x plus 3. It's already in y equals form. But I have this problem in that it has this plus 3 here, which should not exist. And because of that, the answer to this has to be neither. Okay, so I'm going to have you do guided practice um, 1 through 4. And I'm going to stop the video, and when I come back, I'm going to show you, just go through the answers very quickly for you before going through the next portion.